Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. I'd like to say hello again to Avery. Hello to Addie from Seattle. Hello to Ariella, who is six years old. Hello to Tennessee and Juliet, who live in Lawrence, Kansas. Hello to Hugo Ronan Hart, who is three years old from Colchester, England. Hello to Savannah Jade, who lives in Oak Creek. Hello to Connie and her brother Theo. Hello to Ava. Hello to Livy and Addie. And hello to Crash and his baby brother Jet, who live in Houston, Texas. I'd like to say a happy belated birthday to Camille, who turned five on April 20th. Happy birthday to Teresa from Chicago, who will be turning six on April 25th. Happy birthday to Ivor and Hawk, who is turning eight on April 26th. And a happy birthday to Jerner, who will be four years old on May 3rd and is having a lamb-themed birthday party at a farm in Minnesota. Happy birthday to you all. I hope you have a wonderful day. Shoutouts and birthday wishes are one way we give thanks to our supporters. If you would like to support us and receive more bedtime entertainment like this, all ad-free please visit our support page at sleeptightstories.org slash support. Thank you. This is a story about a cat named Yuki. Yuki loves living with her mom. She has the best of everything and loves her life. One day, her mom says she is bringing Yuki a great big surprise. Yuki can't wait. What could it be? Yuki and Koro. Yum, 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 yum. Oh, mom has certainly outdone herself this morning. This is absolutely the best breakfast I have ever had in my whole life, Yuki thought as she gobbled down everything in her bowl as fast as possible. The raspberries, the coconut, and the banana flavors are simply the best, she thought, as she slowly walked away, licking her nose as she went. After a breakfast like that, I think it best that I make my way to the living room window and take a rest on the sofa. I do need my beauty sleep, and the sun is shining just perfectly in the window. Princess, I hope you enjoyed your breakfast, said Nico, her mom, as she took a photo of her for her social account. Don't be too lonely while I am gone. I'll be back from work with some new food from Xiaomei for you to try and a great big surprise for you. Be good and see you later. Nico gave Yuki a quick scratch on her head as she went out the door to catch a taxi to work. Yuki stretched, meowed, and promptly fell asleep. Yuki was a young cat who ate nothing but ice cream. She ate ice cream for breakfast and dinner every single day of the week. Her favorite was abalone flavored, but lately she was leaning towards miso, at least for dinner. Breakfast was always fruit flavored because her mom wanted her to be healthy and fruit is good for you. Being the princess and a popular cat on social media, 
She was pampered and spoiled with all the toys and luxuries that a cat of her station could desire. She had all manner of toys, scratching posts, brand name clothes, and a comfy bed in every room. One was even in the shape of an ice cream cone, which she could climb inside of. She used to have a climbing track that she could use to explore the whole apartment, but she started finding it difficult to climb and jump when she got a little older. Besides, as a princess, should she need to climb and jump? Today was going to be just like any other day. First, Yuki would sleep in the living room while the sun shone on her bed. Then she would slowly make her way into the dining room where she would lay in another bed and clean herself. Cleanliness was very important to Yuki and she would groom herself for a couple of hours every day. One time, she had missed a spot of ice cream on her coat, and Nico gave her a shower. She never wanted to experience that again. After a day of relaxation, Yuki's stomach, which was her internal clock, started to make noises. She knew her human mother would soon be home, and it would be time to eat followed by an evening of being pet and talked to in the soft tones she loved. It also meant dressing up in various costumes that her human mom would make her wear and all the photos that would follow. She didn't mind too much, as long as she didn't have to wear that costume that made her look like a dog. She did not like dogs. Yuki heard the door handle and the door chime. That could only mean one thing. It would soon be time to eat again. More ice cream. I wonder what flavor it will be tonight, she thought, as she slowly got up and stretched. Oh yeah, it also meant that her mom was home, which was nice, but Yuki always thought of her stomach first. As she slowly walked to the front door, she noticed her mom was carrying a strange box and the box was moving. And then she noticed the smell. No, it couldn't be, it couldn't. Hi Yuki, I have a big surprise for you just like I promised this morning, said Nico as she bent down to pet Yuki as she rubbed against her hair standing straight up. I have to work in the office again and will only be working from home a couple times a week. And I am worried that you might be lonely while I am gone. So I got you a little brother to keep you company during the day. He's still very young, but he has already been trained. Oh no, it's true, Yuki thought. She could see his eyes, hear his yelping, and smell that awful scent. It was a dog. Why? I'm not lonely. In fact, I love having this whole apartment to myself all day. If she was so worried, she could have gotten me another stuffed toy to cuddle with. But not this. And then the situation got worse as Nico opened the crate to let the puppy out. Yuki, I want you to meet Koro. And the Labrador puppy ran out and headed straight for Yuki. And before she could protest, arch her back or hiss, Koro was on top of her licking her head and chewing on her ears before leaving her alone to run all over the apartment. So cute. Look, Yuki, he loves you already. Yuck. No way I am letting that happen again. 
as she ran to the relative safety of her ice cream-shaped bed. When Koro came over, she hissed, which made him stop at first. But eventually, with all the happiness that only a puppy has, he ignored Yuki's protests and squeezed right in there with her, licking her head before falling to sleep. Oh my, you two look so cute together, said Nico as she was taking pictures to share with her friends and on her social account. Ah, oh, thought Yuki, why must I be tortured so? Sometime through the night, the puppy must have gotten up and left Yuki alone. Maybe he ran away, she hoped. Her stomach started making rumbling noises as she was extremely hungry, as she was at every mealtime. Yuki and Koro, your breakfasts are ready. Just then, Yuki heard what sounded to her ears like a herd of elephants slipping and sliding down the hall. Koro got there first and was eating so fast that his mouth was almost a blur. Yuki arrived and started eating her bowl of fruit-flavored ice cream, this time strawberry, as Nico came by and said, I have to rush out the door this morning as I have an early meeting. You two be good together. At the same time she went out the apartment door, Koro had finished his bowl of kibble and was licking the bowl vigorously with food all over his face. Ah, no manners, thought Yuki, as she carefully but quickly gobbled down her food. But before she could finish, Koro's head was in her bowl, quickly finishing the ice cream and then proceeding to lick the bowl clean before he ran off into the living room. Yuki stood in shock, not believing what had just happened. She shook the tension from her body and slowly walked out to the living room, hoping that if she had a nap, perhaps this nightmare she was in would end. She walked to the living room and was about to climb up onto her bed on the sofa when she saw that the dog was already there asleep. Sigh, would this nightmare ever end? Yuki was forced to lay on the floor. Imagine me, a princess, a star of social media, being forced to lay on the floor while that stinky dog gets to lay in my bed. What is my world coming to? Something must be done. As she lay there, she started formulating a plan. Yuki looked up to make sure Koro was still asleep. Ugh, he was lying on his back with his head hanging off the edge of the couch. She slowly got up and slinked to the kitchen to hatch her plan. She was going to get him to come into the kitchen while she hid behind the fridge. And as soon as he came in, she would scare him so badly, he would hide in the bedroom until dinner. To get his attention, she rattled his food dish, a sound no dog can resist, as she quickly ran to her hiding place. With a great big thump, she heard him rushing out to see if there was more food. As he sniffed around, she waited and waited. And then, just as he turned his back to her, she jumped out and let out as loud a hiss as she could muster. He ran off, barking loudly, down the hallway towards the bedrooms. Ha, huh, that will do it, she thought. He'll hide in there all day and I can have my bed back and have a proper beauty sleep. But before she could leave the kitchen, 
Koro came running back as fast as he had left and started running around Yuki, jumped on top of her, pulled on her ear, and gave her a great big lick. He then ran out to the living room, jumped up on Yuki's bed, and smiled at her before he promptly fell back to sleep. That night, Yuki had a terrible sleep. She had the worst nightmare. She dreamed that she was in a room full of Labrador puppies who were constantly licking her, making her whole body wet. So disgusting. Yuki and Koro, your breakfasts are ready. Yuki heard yet again what sounded like a herd of elephants slipping and sliding down the hall. Yuki made it to her dish in time to see Koro finish up his food and lick the bowl around the floor. She settled in to enjoy her breakfast, keeping one eye on the dog and the other on her bowl. Koro ran off down the hallway, ignoring Yuki as she quickly ate. Good, maybe now I can eat in peace. Before she could finish her thought, Koro ran back into the kitchen, slipped on the floor, banged into Yuki, and dumped what was left of her ice cream all over the place. He then proceeded to quickly lick it all up before running into the living room where he laid down on the couch to have a nap. This time, Yuki was angry and was determined to scare him badly enough that he would hide in the bedroom all day. So she carefully picked up his bowl and silently carried it into the bathroom. This time, I will jump on top of him. That will surely work. She rattled his bowl and with great effort jumped on top of the bathroom counter and crouched down low so that he couldn't see her. She heard him run first to the kitchen, slipping and sliding, and then turn around and run down the hallway towards the bathroom. Wiggling her body, she was poised to strike. In he came, and as she pushed off to jump, she slipped and promptly fell straight into the toilet. She started meowing loudly. This is so terrible, she thought. The toilet, the water, and I can't get out. I could be stuck in here until Mom comes back which could be seemingly forever. And then, Koro reached into the toilet, grabbed Yuki's neck with his mouth, and pulled her out onto the floor, grabbed a nearby towel, and covered her. Yuki let out a long meow of thanks. That night, when Nico came home, she noticed the huge mess and called Yuki and Koro to the bathroom and asked, Which one of you made this mess in the bathroom? Was it you, Koro? Was it you, Yuki? Yuki had never been in trouble before and wasn't sure what to expect from her human mom. Would it affect the ice cream supply? Then Koro stepped forward with his head down. You naughty dog, Nico said. Don't do this again, okay? I will close the bathroom door from now on, but try harder to be a good pup. He took the blame and saved me from my mistake, Yuki thought. Maybe he isn't so bad after all. The next morning during breakfast, Yuki offered Koro some of her ice cream, and they both shared the bed in the living room, and over time became inseparable friends.
And that's the end of our story. Good night. Sleep tight. <laughs>